Good evening friends, my name is Dr. Pratik Joshi and I am an orthopedic surgeon working at BJ Government Medical College and Sassoon General Hospitals in Pune. I hope all of you are staying safe in these times of coronavirus and in these difficult times I have decided to tie up with a couple of organizations including Medusin to provide quality academic content for undergraduate students free of cost over YouTube for anyone and everyone who is interested. So a new effort in this direction is this clinical theoretical module on osteoarthritis. So if you are interested in this, please like, share and subscribe to the channel Rapid Revision of Orthopedics by Dr. Pratik Joshi and also to the partner channel that is Medusain India. So moving on, let us take a look as to why this module is different from what I am normally doing. So in this module, what I am going to do is we are going to have one short and concise PowerPoint with a picture in picture for theory, objective neat MCQ points as well as practical aspects and osteoarthritis knee is the ideal topic to start off with something like this. So we will have pathophysiology, we will have clinical features, we will have a lot of epidemiology involved. Apart from that there will be a section on clinical examination with clinical photos, x-rays and lines of treatment. Also at the end as a bonus feature I will give you a provisional diagnosis for a short case of osteoarthritis and how it can be handled in the exam. So. The aim behind all this is that for an undergraduate student who is preparing for his exams, his or her exams, you should be able to revise the entire topic from the examination point of view in a single sitting. And this is why we have this clinical theoretical module. So thank you Medusain India for the opportunity to collaborate with you and let us start with the topic. So now this is the first section of the topic that is epidemiology of osteoarthritis knee. Now for all the final year students and NEET aspirants this page is an MCQ gold mine. So please write down all these topics which are there in the page. I have sourced these from none other than NCBI stat pearls which is the gold standard reference for all these uh, pieces of data and this has been updated as of March and April 2020. So, First and foremost, osteoarthritis is also known as degenerative joint disease. Secondly, there are two subtypes, primary osteoarthritis which is not preceded by any sort of a trauma or any sort of a systemic disorder and secondary which is either post traumatic or the post any sort of systemic disorder. The most common overall subtype of osteoarthritis is primary and amongst secondary osteoarthritis the most common subtype is post traumatic. Moving on, the global incidence of osteoarthritis is 3.3 to 3.6 percent combining both the genders. In absolute numbers, it is about 13 million cases per annum. Remember, this is incidence and therefore when we say 13 million, it is a reference to 13 million new cases per annum and the global prevalence is about 263 million cases which means that at any given point of time, there will be around 263 million patients of osteoarthritis throughout the world. Moving on, the most common joint is the knee with a gross incidence of 240 cases per 100,000 population. Gender predisposition, females are more susceptible to osteoarthritis than males in a rough ratio of 1.3 as to 1. We shall get to this as to why females are more predominant. Moving on, prevalence is also more in females because of which the overall prevalence all over the globe is more in terms of females than in terms of males. Also another MCQ point here is that the prevalence of osteoarthritis is found to be the highest in the age group of more than 70 years. Also another MCQ point in this page is that osteoarthritis has number one a low rate of symptomaticity which means that only 15% of radiologically positive patients of osteoarthritis knee are symptomatic. Second that the amount of symptoms may not necessarily correlate with the radiological grading and your third MCQ point here is that the radiological grading for osteoarthritis knee which is the kellegren lorenz scaling which we will come to later in this powerpoint it is not an indicator for surgery which means there is no specific kellegren lorenz grade beyond which osteoarthritis knee has to be operated. It is all based on patient's requirements, patient's functionality and the amount of discomfort and disability that the patient is experiencing. So this particular slide had all these MCQ points. Now as a uh, general rule, if there is a lot of text in the slide, most of the text is MCQ points. I have designed the PowerPoint likewise. Also wherever you see something written in bold, that is also an MCQ point. So I request you to please write it down or store it somehow. This is open source data taken from NCBI stat pearls and I have absolutely no commercial interest from this. 
moving on now whenever we read in psm that uh, any particular disease has a set of risk factors and what they give us in psm is an epidemiological triad an epidemiological triad is the holy trinity of three things which are responsible for a disease first one is the host second is the agent and third is the environment and right here is exactly what we see here in case of your agent what we have is excuse me yeah so in case of your agent is your mechanics so your biomechanics including the lifestyle is the agent host is the host factors including genetic factors and environment so let us take a look at all these now this is another slide with a lot of mcq material first is genetics and host factors which is one of the most important factors relating to osteoarthritis out of which epigenetic factors are responsible to of 30 to 65 percent of the weightage of this risk factor so remember this percentage epigenetic factors are about 30 to 65 percent of the genetic factors female gender will predispose to osteoarthritis because firstly as you know lower limbs of females are more in physiological virus as compared to lower limbs of males and therefore there is already reduced joint space especially in the medial compartment of the knee and because of which osteoarthritis especially osteoarthritis knee is more common in females second because of estrogen there is ligamentous laxity which is more in females as compared to males and because of that again there is more wear and tear and more biomechanical strain on the bone and cartilage bone density and postmenopausal osteoporosis is also a factor which contributes to the increased prevalence as well as incidence of osteoarthritis in case of females now another mcq point here that is age is the strongest risk factor responsible for osteoarthritis and it is the strongest risk factor in males as well as females and overall in case of hormonal factors amongst all the sex hormones estrogen is the most important risk factor for osteoarthritis in females now just here to clear out some confusion this may sound very basic but this can be a point of confusion estrogen is protective against osteoporosis which correlates with the increased incidence of osteoporosis in postmenopausal females however estrogen is an increased risk factor for osteoarthritis moving on anatomical factors in the host including syndromic associations basically anything which causes deformities in the limbs especially in the weight bearing lower limbs causing excessive degrees of virus or valgus that will lead to an increased malalignment due to the malalignment there will be biomechanical variations and increased degeneration now moving on environmental factors environmental factors such as vitamin d deficiency passive smoking local dietary factors such as deficiency of vitamin d and calcium in the local diet or in places where vegetarian diet is much more common as compared to non-vegetarian diet and local terrain factors which means patients who are used to walking on rocky terrain or those whose lifestyle involves walking on irregular terrain will subject their joints to a greater degree of biomechanical stress as compared to those with either a sedentary lifestyle or those who are used to walking on plain ground moving on biomechanics in terms of lifestyle obesity metabolic syndrome smoking osteoporosis and any other factor which leads to increased biomechanical strain on the joint will propose a risk to osteoarthritis especially of the knee now the reason why i keep mentioning knee is what we have covered in the first slide that is grossly the most common joint to be involved in osteoarthritis is the knee moving on to the pathophysiology now another mcq point right at the start of the slide that is the most common collagen found in the cartilage is type 2 collagen the other components are proteoglycans and chondrocytes and a lot of water content so this should help you in your all except type of question where cartilage compr comprises of type 2 collagen proteoglycans and chondrocytes moving on when we see a healthy cartilage a healthy cartilage is not a static entity it is a continuously dynamic system where cartilage is undergoing degeneration and new regenerated cartilage or freshly created cartilage is taking its place and therefore we can say that healthy cartilage is actually a balance or an equilibrium of regeneration and degeneration now degeneration apart from biomechanical trauma is caused by overexpression of matrix metalloproteinases and other degrading enzymes now these enzymes act on the proteins and on the uh, type 2 collagen of the cartilage and degrade it now as soon as this degradation starts the body tries to attempt 
to repair the cartilage and that is by secretion of tissue inhibitors of these matrix metalloproteinases and a reflex increase in the secretion of proteoglycans and therefore when this degenerative process of osteoarthritis starts it begins as a race between the degeneration because of enzymes which goes on and the attempted repair which is attempting to catch up with the increased rate of degeneration but most of the time it is a failed or an inadequate repair which means that the reparative attempts fail to catch up with the speed of degeneration and therefore there is an overall loss of proteoglycans overall loss of cartilage and therefore the equilibrium which we spoke of here the equilibrium between regeneration and degeneration shifts towards degeneration and therefore macroscopically what we get to see is physical degeneration of the cartilage which is cracking fissuring and erosion of the articular surface now moving on what we need to see and this again is a slide full of mcq and viva related material and that is the microscopic or biomechanical biochemical changes in case of osteoarthritis now the first one is water content there is an increase in water content remember this sort of a degeneration is always an inflammatory process and because of inflammation it's in the name osteoarthritis and inflammation will always be accompanied by edema and therefore overall water content will increase now point number two is proteoglycan synthesis proteoglycan synthesis again there will be a reflex increase in proteoglycan synthesis as we have seen and as the body's attempt to repair what is being lost in degeneration now a point i'd like to show you here is that the chondrocyte size and number remains the same this is an inflammatory process of the cartilage however chondrocyte size and number will remain the same moving on point number four says overall proteoglycan content decreases which means that in the presence of an increased rate of proteoglycan synthesis the overall rate of pro the overall concentration of proteoglycans decreases which means that in the case of the race of degeneration versus regeneration degeneration is winning and proteoglycan synthesis is unable to catch up with the proteoglycan degradation another point point number five is modulus of elasticity now modulus of elasticity well, i have a video on this on this very channel and that is general terminology and basic concepts in orthopedics where i have explained what exactly is the modulus of elasticity or the young's modulus now the link will be up right up there in the upper right corner now modulus of elasticity is the point along the stress strain curve of a particular object when the elastic behavior changes to plastic which means that beyond a certain amount of stress being applied to the given material the material will fail to rebound to its original shape and because of that this modulus of elasticity in osteoarthritis decreases and therefore the cartilage becomes friable and deformable and therefore it adds to the biomechanical issues which further exacerbate the osteoarthritis also in case of microscopic changes the amount of collagen shows marked disorganization which in a normal cartilage would show a certain level of organization of the collagen fibrils so these are your microscopic and biochemical changes in case of your osteoarthritis of knee now another bonus neat mcq material we always speak about matrix metalloproteinases and then how the body produces inhibitors of matrix metalloproteinases so these are the enzymes again very useful in your all except type of questions so the matrix metalloproteinases are first stromylysin plasmin collagenase gelatinase and agricanase 1 and the inhibitors of these are tissue inhibitor of metalloproteinase dash 1 so timp1 timp2 and our old friend alpha 2 macroglobulin so these are things which can be asked as mcqs so please take them down moving on now in case of clinical history of osteoarthritis we must remember that osteoarthritis is one of the most commonly asked topics in cold orthopedics or non traumatic orthopedics and because of that we will not have a history of a specific trauma in case of okay a, a short case of primary osteoarthritis now there is an exception to this the exception is that if the patient has an unrelated trauma sometime in the remote past the patient is likely to extrapolate their symptoms to that particular trauma so the patient may tell you that i had a history of fall 10 years ago and then this um, trouble has started 
so it may or may not be a post traumatic osteoarthritis it may be a primary osteoarthritis depending on the age of the patient however the patient is likely to extrapolate that particular history to the history of trauma and that is one thing one should be careful of but in general in cases of primary osteoarthritis the history is generally non specific there is always an insidious onset with gradual progression and the symptoms are vague now the location will always be around the joint line now given the propensity of knee being the most common cause of primary osteoarthritis in developing countries the pain is always around the medial and the lateral joint lines it may involve the inferior surface of patella if femoropatellar joint osteoarthritis has already set in however femoropatellar joint osteoarthritis is generally a late finding and you will have significant amounts of tibiofemoral joint osteoarthritis before you actually get patellofemoral moving on the pain will be characterized by being a dull aching kind of pain there will be a diurnal variation often patients may talk about morning stiffness where it's very stiff and painful early in the morning and as and when they start their activity it decreases however as the patient moves and goes on about their day to day tasks the pain slowly starts increasing so morning stiffness is relieved by some activity however the pain of osteoarthritis is exacerbated on activity and relieved on rest moving on to activity there will be exacerbation on weight bearing a specific finding in osteoarthritis knee is pain on flexion and increased pain on climbing the stairs because it exposes various areas of the articular cartilage to different kinds of strain also strenuous exercise is known to increase the pain and there will be stiffness there will be swelling of the joint and there will be a history of decreased ambulation so whenever we talk about an orthopedic case history we should always talk in terms of the disability of the patient and the disability of the patient is the inability of the patient to perform activities of daily living now activities of daily living in clinical terms the mnemonic for this very ironically is death d for dressing e for eating a for ambulation T for toileting and H for hygiene or personal hygiene and therefore when we talk about the disability caused by a certain problem to the patient we must talk about inability to do one of these five so in case of stiffness and swelling and uh, uh, decreased movement the patient will have a problem with ambulation toileting and personal hygiene moving on in case of radiology now again osteoarthritis knee is one of the most common x rays which is asked in undergraduate examination now on your right side you will see that there are five particular points which have to be mentioned at the time of talking about an x ray for osteoarthritis especially of the knee and they are in sequence first one is decreased joint space now decreased joint space when we look at an x ray of osteoarthritis the joint space is actually the space occupied by the articular cartilage which is radiolucent now the absence of or a decrease in the joint space indicates that there is erosion and loss of the articular cartilage now you can see on the medial as well as on the lateral side there is a decrease in the joint space however if you follow the margin of the bone you will see that medial joint space is reduced to a lesser extent as compared to the lateral joint space please do not get confused this is a shadow of the patella which we are able to see and a shadow of a few osteophytes but the overall decrease of the lateral joint space seems to be less than the overall decrease in the medial joint space moving on the articular margins are not sharp as it is in a normal x-ray whereas they seem to be blurred sclerosed and irregular now here where you can see the laser pointer is this reactive new bone formation because of degeneration and the secondary inflammation that it incites and these are small loose bodies of bone which are formed these are called as osteophytes and the overall final common pathway of this is malalignment of the articular surface because of the irregular articular edges and the irregular destruction of the joint surface so decreased joint space blurred articular margins sclerosis irregularity osteophytes and malalignment these are the key words to be used while describing an x-ray of osteoarthritis of knee now here we are with the modified kellegren lorenz grading we will not go into too much detail but what we need to see is that kellegren lorenz grading gives you grade 0 which is no osteoarthritis and grade 4 which is the absolute highest grade of osteoarthritis now one thing i'd like to draw your attention to is that 
the line between grade 1 and 2 is by the presence of osteophytes. So, if there are no osteophytes, it is either a grade 0 or a grade 1. If there are definite osteophytes, then it is beyond grade 2. Again, I would like to draw your attention to the line between grade 3 and grade 4, where grade 3 and grade 4 have deformity of the bone ends, whereas grade 2 does not, which means that if there are only osteophytes, it is grade 2. If there is osteophytes with deformity of bone ends, it is grade 3 or grade 4. And of course, the severity of sclerosis starts with grade 4 and therefore if you have severe sclerosis it is a grade 4 Kellogg lorentz grading. Now this is a very good theoretical system to grade osteoarthritis but another MCQ point here is that Kellogg lorentz grading is not a definitive guide to management of osteoarthritis of the knee. Osteoarthritis of the knee has to be managed based on the requirement of the patient, the current functional status of the patient and the expectations of the patient with regard to therapy. And there is no specific grade in this Kellogg and Lorentz scaling which will say that beyond a certain grade the total knee arthroplasty has to be done. Moving on, there are a several set of things we can do to manage and I am giving them in sequence. First one is conservative management which means simple physiotherapeutical exercises, some amount of painkillers, some amount of warm fermentation, so on and so forth. Followed by that we have intra-articular injections of steroid or hyaluronic acid. Which of them is more preferable always remains a doubt of debate but at undergraduate level according to current literature you can safely mention that steroid in terms of cost effectiveness is preferred over hyaluronic acid. Moving on arthroscopic debridement or lavage is a kind of therapy which is being investigated for the osteoarthritis of knee. However, long term results on, osteo uh, on arthroscopic debridement as a treatment for osteoarthritis is yet to be found. Then high tibial osteotomy which is a different topic onto itself and then you have your unicondyler or bicondyler that is total knee arthroplasty which is the final treatment or the gold standard treatment for osteoarthritis. So, total knee arthroplasty is the gold standard treatment of osteoarthritis of the knee. This is another MCQ point for you. And conservative management with physiotherapy is the first treatment to be given for osteoarthritis of the knee. That is also another MCQ point. So, this is one of our intraoperative photos for osteoarthritis knee undergoing total knee replacement. Now, this is a photo of before the incision was taken. The reason I have put this photo here is because the index finger of the surgeon and the thumb of the surgeon they are together joined by a line where the surgeon is trying to palpate the joint line. So if you are asked in the clinical examination how to palpate the joint line for the knee the answer is you have to palpate down till the uh, femoral condyles with your thumb on the tibial tuberosity and then as your index finger moves down the femoral condyles there will be a definite gap. At the same time your thumb should be moving up from the tibial tuberosity until you can palpate the same gap and the line joining your thumb and your index finger at the point at which you can feel the gap in both fingers is the joint line. Moving on. This is the post-operative x-ray of total knee arthroplasty. Here we have a tibial component and a femoral component. And this is the functional outcome of total knee arthroplasty which is a co near complete flexion and a near complete extension. This is the same patient from the first photo which we saw which uh, who has undergone total knee arthroplasty and as you can see she has an excellent functional outcome. So this was our two cents about osteoarthritis including osteoarthritis of the knee. I have tried my best to cover clinical examination as well as theoretical points and neat MCQ points. Now before we leave, here is the final diagnosis which you would give for a patient of osteoarthritis knee. The final diagnosis is my patient 65 year old male or female complaining of insidious onset and gradual progression pain to both the knees right knee more than left and an inability to flex the knee also the pain increasing on walking 
climbing down the stairs and the pain is more in the morning and associated with stiffness which is relieved on activity and in terms of disability my patient is unable to flex the knee use indian toilet and his or her circle of ambulation is decreased and therefore in view of all these findings and in the absence of a traumatic etiology i would like to propose a diagnosis of primary osteoarthritis of knee joint this was our diagnosis and i hope you like this article on osteoarthritis of knee please get in touch my contact email is in the channel information you can also hit me up on facebook or instagram if you feel like it and please like share and subscribe to the channel and leave your comments for feedback or anything else that you'd like to say so thank you very much for listening and thank you medicine india for the collaboration stay safe and see you next time